All right, here we go. Salute to Knicks Nation on this Tuesday afternoon. A matinee edition of Knicks Fan TV Live presented by Underdog Fantasy. Tonight, the Knicks take on the New Jersey Nets in the Battle of New York Act 2. And joining me on today's show is none other than the co-host of Evan and Tiki on WFAN, 660 AM, 101.9 FM. Could also catch them on the Odyssey app. He is a diehard Knicks fan, Nets fan, but a Knicks season <laughs> ticket holder. A conflicted New Yorker, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to talk to him and see what his problem is. He is Evan Roberts, and he joins us today, man. Uh, let me make a couple of things clear. All right? First of all, I am not conflicted. I despise the New York Knicks. I'm Let's... open and honest by my dislike for your franchise for my dislike for a lot of your fans, not necessarily yeah. you. So there is absolutely no confliction. And can we have a discussion about something? Let's talk. Let's talk. This do you is why you're think, here. Yeah. Do you think that you're insulting me and others yeah. by calling us the New Jersey Nets? Like, is that what you think? <laughs> it doesn't matter. It, it's just a little noogie, you know, from big brother to the little brother. You know, it's just little noogies, man. But, but you know what? I'm going to tell you a true story. Now, yeah. there are Net fans who became fans in Brooklyn. I acknowledge that. Yeah. I'm not one of them. I'm a New Jersey Net fan from the beginning. And when you say New Jersey, because I've heard you say this before, yes. not just to me. You've said it on Knicks fan TV, which I listen to religiously. Just yeah. not as much recently because you guys are We're doing a lot of winning. <laughs> and I don't like when you win. <laughs> but that's not an insult to me because yeah. my best memories as a Net fan is from New Jersey. Yeah. So when you say that, you think you're insulting me. You think you're insulting us, but all you're doing is making me think of fond memories. <laughs> that's fair. That's a, that's a fair way to spin it. Now, as I open the show with, uh, you are a Knicks season ticket holder as well. And yes. we, we have been winning. Have you been enjoying these wins? We're 9-2 and two since OG got there. Have you been enjoying the wins, the atmosphere in the garden? What's been your experience? Please elaborate. Well, I am a Knicks season ticket holder for two reasons, okay? Number one, as a businessman. Okay. Uh, right. They do well. Your team is a relatively hot team yes. when it comes to tickets. And then yeah. I like having the access if I want to go to a game because I do host a New York sports talk show Fair point. despite not liking them. Yeah. Um, and I do like going to Madison Square Garden and rooting against you. Like, there's no question. I like going there and rooting against the Knicks because, as the old <laughs> adage is, I've got two favorite teams in basketball, my Nets and whoever plays the Knicks. So on a night like tonight, it's easy. It's only one. <laughs> it's just the Nets. But when you're at MSG and we're trying to get the crowd going and the let's go Knicks chants are going, what do you do? I uh, stick to my stomach. Usually I mumble <laughs> under my breath. Um, I root openly for the other team. I, I, I am honest about that. People have great respect for me on the Chase Bridge. I don't have any issues with people. Yeah. I think they respect my basketball fandom. But, yeah, it's it's an oddity, I admit, that I am a Knicks season ticket holder. I am also a Nets season ticket holder. Yes. And I do go to far more Nets games. But I do go there because I do appreciate basketball in all seriousness. Um, and I think that when the Knicks are an event, which they are a lot, especially come springtime, it's good to be there. Like, I really enjoyed going to game one of the Eastern Conference semifinals against Miami. That was one of my fondest moments of the basketball season yeah. last year. I had a great time. For sure. For sure. Uh, what's been your impressions of this Knicks team since the OG trade? Nine and nine and two since the year started. New look Knicks right now. What, what do you think? I thought, so when I found out about the trade, I was half asleep. It was during, like, Christmas vacation. I was yeah. doing a lot of traveling with the family. Yeah. And when I read the trade, my first reaction was, believe it or not, a pit in my stomach. Because mm. I said, this is a smart deal. Like, the Knicks got mm. better. They fit mm -hmm. better. Yeah. And I was surprised by the negative reaction that a lot of Knicks fans had. Now, I, I would, with all the respect in the world, I understand falling in love with your guys. Uh, I have a beard on my face right yeah, now. Welcome the reason to the I have club, a beard man. on my face. Welcome to the club, man. Yes. I, I, I'm, I'm doing this. <laughs> I'm not doing this to <laughs> imitate you, though. <laughs> I'm doing this out of loyalty to Pete Alonzo, who is a member mm. of the Mets, who I want the Mets to keep. Okay. And I admit that a part of my love for Pete comes from kind of this irrational, he's my guy attitude. Yeah. So I respect, jokes aside, the irrational RJ's my guy, IQ's my guy attitude that Nick fans have. And I respect that. And I thought the way they treated them upon their arrival was full class. Yeah. But I was surprised by the negative reaction of the trade because to me, it's just a, a basketball fan. I thought, wow, first of all, you got the best player in the trade, if we're being honest. And I think you got the best fit in this trade for this team. So 
I'm not surprised at the fact that it's worked because that pit in my stomach told me it was going to work. But I was surprised by the initial negative reaction that a lot of Knicks fans had to the deal. Yeah. But it's a smart deal. You guys are clearly not done. And I'm scared of the Knicks because I think they are the biggest threat I've ever faced as a Net fan in a long, long time. Like a threat of going on that serious, serious run and bringing me to my worst nightmare, which is you guys getting to a finals and winning a championship. There you go. And to my producers, if you're listening, please clip that for our Twitter reels and socials uh, for later on today before Evan goes on air at 2 o'clock. Please clip that clip that, uh, that, that one for our social clips. Um, as far as next move, there's a lot of talk about what they're going to do next. I'm actually surprised and, and thankful that they're able to tread water right now, given that their bench has is, is been pretty woeful when, when, uh, when Randall and Brunson are out of the game. But they're still 9-2. and two. Where do you think they go next? Rozier is just traded to the Heat, so that's one guy off the list. What do you think about a bench upgrade here? I mean, I thought, you know, and I know he didn't play well when you guys saw him a few weeks ago when you guys just destroyed the Trailblazers. The game I was in the building for, that was disgusting. Yeah. But Malcolm Brogdon feels like a perfect fit. I think that yeah. Nick fans are realizing, rightfully so, that this is not the time to go big game hunting. There isn't necessarily a big game to hunt, if you will. Yeah. Maybe during the offseason, maybe a year from now. But I think you need that piece off the bench. I don't know if Kyle Lowry is going to fit nah, uh, financially. Washed, and I know he's 37 years old, but I think he still has something left. And I think he could help your team. But financially, I'm not sure if that'll work now with him and Charlotte. But you need a bench piece. You need probably two bench pieces. A backup big in case Mitch doesn't come back. I wouldn't be that concerned about, as you like to call him, I heart. Or all you guys like to call him <laughs> I heart. Which I think is the most obnoxious nickname in sports. But you know what? <laughs> Out of what, respect, would you I'm on rather Blockenstein? Would you rather Blockenstein? Because he's on point on defense this year, man. Uh, when I look at him, I just see a giant douche. <laughs> if I'm being honest with you, <laughs> nothing personal, just the way I feel. When he called out Net fans a few weeks ago, that bothered yeah. me. Oh yeah, it's like a home game. He insulted you out. a little bit. He insulted you just a little bit. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, but, that's good. Man. Yeah, I think that the smaller moves are probably on the way, but they're smaller. But man, they're important, like you said. Yeah. Right now, you've got to run with your starters for considerable minutes because. You don't have much of a bench, but I think that Leon is obviously going to add to that. But Malcolm Brogdon, to me, just on paper, feels like a perfect fit. It won't be that expensive, I don't think. Yeah, I think Brogdon is definitely the perfect fit now. Our guy Ian Begley of SNY is saying that there hasn't been any type of ex- advanced talks based on people that he's spoken to in terms of uh, the Knicks and the Blazers talking. He doesn't think uh, a Levine DeRozan thinks that that might be a little too rich for their blood. But then there's my guy Alec Burks, man. A.B., or as I call him, absolute buckets. Dropped 33 off the bench on the Bucks just a couple nights ago. I'm thinking he could be back, man. I think there's a well, realistic you, possibility. You know, you know Thibodeau loves his guy. <laughs> yeah. I think that as long as you do it, because it's like you got this weird balance of you should go for it. Like, jokes aside, why not? You're a couple of pieces away, not necessarily from winning a title, but at least giving yourself the best chance to go on a long run. But you also don't want to do anything stupid with the picks that you have. Kind of keep yourself in a good position in case a star becomes available. You know who I think is actually a decent fit for you? And I swear I'm not trolling it. Yeah. And I don't want to see it happen. And I don't think it'll happen because yeah. we don't do business together. Mm. But Spencer Dinwiddie. I mean, Spencer Dinwiddie certainly wants the hell out. He's been playing miserable. But I think you yeah. know new scene, move up in the standings a little bit. Yeah. You may get a more inspired Dinwiddie. And I can't imagine he'd be very expensive. I I don't think we do business, the Knicks and Nets. Like, no. I think there is that kind of we don't want to help them out kind of feel. But yeah. I don't think I'm crazy to think that's not the worst fit in the world for you guys. The, the number one Nick troll coming back to the Knicks and helping them get to the second round of the Eastern Conference Finals. That would definitely be a story. I got some Knicks fans still holding out hope for Macau Bridges, man. But uh, what do you think about You got, that? you know, you guys got to stop with that. And <laughs> I don't get it. Look. The Nets are in this weird spot on what they should do long term. But the one thing I know they're not going to do is trade Mikel Bridges. They were offered. You guys all heard the story when yeah. they were offered last year from Memphis. Like they're not dealing them unless they get some kind of godfather offer. And a lot of your picks are fugazi. Like, let's be yeah. honest. Like, yeah. You did a good job collecting first round picks. They're not exactly like some amazing thing that's going to land me in the lottery. So I don't even think if you offered your treasure tr- tr- treasure trove of picks, I would do it. And then also, I don't want to help you. Like, I'm, I'm kind of with the Nets. Like, I would put a Knicks tax on you. I'm you sure. know what? You know what? I'm going to be fair. You want Mikel Bridges? Okay, I want Jalen Brunson. Deal? Mm. That, no. no. There's no deal. <laughs> There's no deal. Now, be, before they got OG, yeah, I would say 
by by any means necessary, go get Mikael Bridges. But the two teams are never going to trade with each other. They just got Ananobi. So the ship sailed. If the Knicks wanted Bridges, they should have just drafted him. The question is, where do the Nets go from here? Because they're 11th in the East right now. They do have Bridges there, but he's kind of come back to the pack a little bit. You know, last year he had a, a huge surge where it's just like, whoa, you know, the shot creation back came out of nowhere. But now it's kind of like, you know, you can't necessarily have him be the A1 guy. Where, where do you see them going here? Yeah, so when Jalen got out of Dallas and Mikel got out of Phoenix, I thought there were some great similarities between the two in that if you give each guy the keys to a franchise – can they prove that they're number one guys now that they're no longer being overshadowed by other superstars? Your guy's proven that. I think that every Nick fan agrees. I'm with you. Jalen has proven he is on a star level. Mikel Bridges has shown flashes of it, but the reality is he's not. Like on a championship caliber team or on a really good team, he's probably a two, maybe a two and a half. So once we've come to that conclusion, which I have, I'm not sure the Nets have, now you got to say to yourself, okay, we're kind of screwed because of the James Harden trade. We don't control our own draft picks yeah. for a few more years, but we do have a lot of picks from Phoenix, obviously an unprotected pick from Philadelphia and whatnot, and Dallas. What do we do? And blowing it up would be my decision if I had my own picks. Because then I would say, let's get more picks. If we suck, we can at least benefit from it. But, dude, when you don't have your own picks, which unfortunately I'm used to, This is the second go around where I've had to have these discussions. I don't think blowing it up is a real option. Yeah. So I wouldn't trade Mikel Bridges, not because I'm under this false notion he's a number one, but just because I don't think the return of draft picks when you sucking isn't going to benefit you in any way serves a purpose. So I think what they need to do is keep the eyes open for a star that becomes available because they are positioned to trade for one. Yeah. And then also sell off valuable pieces that aren't going to get you anywhere. So Dorian Finney-Smith is a valuable piece. Royce O'Neal is a valuable piece. I don't think Spencer Dinwiddie is a valuable piece, but certainly I'm open about dealing him. And I think they've got to be smart sellers to continue to build up their treasure trove of picks. But an all-out blow-up, it doesn't make sense when you don't control your own draft picks for the next four years. Yeah, that, that's a fair point. I, I definitely agree with you there. And this one was interesting. This is from Eric Slater. He's a Brooklyn Nets beat reporter for Clutch Points. I, I don't know if you're familiar with these, you know, one of your people. Uh, he says that I am. The, <laughs> he says that the Nets should now be in the driver's seat for Donovan Mitchell if he becomes available down the line with the Heat trading one of their only remaining draft pick, first round picks for Terry Rozier. Could this become an arms race in the summertime? Knicks versus Nets. Battle of New York for Donovan Mitchell. Does it spill out into so, the offseason? So I, I got to admit, this is emotional for me. You know, we talk yeah. about you guys, Nick fans, the love for RJ, for IQ, my love for Pete Alonso. Donovan Mitchell is my guy. Mm. Like, to talk me, he exemplifies New York. The fact that this kid grew up in Connecticut, his father worked for my favorite baseball team, and Donovan Mitchell is a true blue, not a fake, a true blue diehard Mets fan. Yep. Like, he sits yep. there and tweets about the Mets. Now, you know me, all right? You know I love the Nets, I love the Mets, and I love the Jets. And the idea that I could have a superstar who is like me, I mean, obviously, he's a hell of a lot more athletic than me, <laughs> yeah. so we, we ain't that similar. But you know what I mean? Like, a guy like that, so it clou- I have to admit, it clouds sometimes my judgment on if it's a smart basketball trade because I would just be so happy to root for him. It was difficult, man, rooting for Kyrie at times. It was difficult rooting for James Harden. So, yeah, I want him, but I admit off the top, before even getting into any basketball reasons, a lot of it's emotional. A lot of it's, man, I want to go to the arena and genuinely love my favorite player and know he's me. He's one of my guys. Like, I'm going to see him at City Field during the summer. So I do want to pursue Donovan Mitchell, but I'm also not, naive enough to think that pursuing Donovan Mitchell is going to make the Nets a championship caliber. Yeah, it's yeah. not. It'll make us more fun. It'll certainly me- make me as a fan, you know, happier. But we're not – we're far away from being a championship yeah. team. I know that. It's going to make for an interesting summer, man, because I think that that this is what who the Knicks are going to go after. A lot of Knicks fans are saying the fit doesn't work with Brunson and all that. They don't like it. Two small guards in the backcourt. I get all of that. I still think Leon Rose and these guys are going to go for another star player, another CAA guy, the homegrown talent. Yeah, but they want that. CP, I, 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 I don't mean to be a jerk here, yeah. but aren't you tired of losing out on star players to the Nets? 
Yes. I mean, this has been going on yeah. for a long time, whether it's Durant, whether it's Kyrie. Let's yeah. go back a little earlier. Vince Carter. Remember Vince, that? Oh, Vince. we're getting Vince Carter. And then we swoop in and go get him. So don't pump yourself up to go into war with us for Donovan Mitchell because, yet again, you guys may beat us on the court, and you do, and you will, but do you want to lose to the little old Nets Listen. again on a star player? But no, but history has shown that sometimes the grass ain't greener. And as you guys look at it, with the big three burned the Brooklyn Bridge, now you're left with Ben Simmons. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes the Nets show you that it was better to let it go. It was better to let it go, man. So, so you're trying to convince me we should let it go? Like, you're yeah. a great basketball mind. Yeah. Do you think the Nets should pursue Donovan Mitchell? The answer is yes. You know yeah. that. Yeah. I, I think so they don't tell me to let it go. No, well, I think if you go get him, I think the experiment won't crash and burn. And if we get him, we'll go to the Eastern Conference Finals. That, that, that's the only uh, way it's going to well, work. I can't argue that we'll crash and burn because, listen, especially the teams I root for, bro, all I do is crash and burn. Like, <laughs> that I'm is very, true. very much used to that being the end result. <laughs> that is true. That is true. Shout out to Aaron Rodgers, by the way. Um, <laughs> Once again, we're talking to Evan Roberts, co-host of Evan and Tiki. They will be on today from 2 to 6.30 p.m. on WFAN 660 AM 101.9 FM, as well as the Odyssey app. CP the Franchise here. Salute everybody in the chat. Hit that thumbs up button for you boys. I see a lot of Franchise channel members in here. My guy Lee Blocks, I'm checking in from England. Lee, what's going on? Gregory Weiner, got you open. J Rose 712, salute to J Rose. My two cents is always in here. Yeah, we got Evan Roberts in here, man. He's he's a diehard KFTV fan. Next season ticket holder, and that's fan. He, he's all over the place. So we had to bring him into the front of the congregation to have this conversation. Today. Let me tell you, and I'm at next win tonight, I will be like <laughs> drinking all of the tears of KFTV tonight. Let me tell you. I'll be locked in. I'll be giving you a thumbs up all night, bro. Back at it at the Barclays. What what do you think of, of the NBA billing this as rivalry week? You know, it's Knicks versus Nets, it's Lakers, Clippers. What do you think about them throwing that in the marketing machine? I mean, Look, they can say it. I think Knicks yeah. Nets as a rivalry is very mixed. Like, I, I'll be honest with you, it's a rivalry to me. I mean, I, I don't like you guys. I don't like when you come yeah. into my building. I don't like the Knicks. So is there more oomph for me tonight than if we're playing Utah next week? Of course there is. And I think mm. amongst Knicks fans, it's probably more split than you guys want to admit. I know that there's a few Knicks fans who say, we don't care, it's whatever, no big deal. Yeah. But I also think that there are Knicks fans, especially if they live in Brooklyn, especially if they live in New York City and they're – now surrounded by new net fans where it's obnoxious. And I admit that some of us, certainly not me, but some of us got very loud and arrogant during our big three era because we thought things were going to go well. So I yeah. think there are some Nick fans that certainly look at a game like tonight and say, yeah, I can't lose to those bastards. Like, we got to beat them. But I, I think it's split. This isn't fully Mets, Yankees quite yet. It's not fully Jets, Giants, or dare I say Rangers, Islanders. But I think some of us realize the importance of it. Look, I know... I'd be lying to you if I mm. said I don't care about Knicks Nets. Of course I do. Yeah. I care more. I want to beat you. Yeah. This team sucks. My team just had an awful embarrassment on Sunday against the Clippers where we're up 16 nothing to start. We're up by 19. We're up by 11 with five mm. minutes to go. And we let those geriatrics blow right past us. <laughs> and I was disgusted. <laughs> Nothing would make me feel better than to beat you guys tonight in Brooklyn. Now, do yeah. I think we are? Probably not. We suck. We're losers. I don't trust this coach anymore. But... There's um for it. So for me, it is a rivalry, and yeah. I can't wait to be there tonight. It's it's a rivalry for me, man, because, uh, you know, for the better part of the last two decades, that's dominated, you know, through the kid era. Yeah. And then when they had the, the KD big three, I mean, you'd watch these games. And I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that the Knicks win, but they have no chance. And so after you guys got rid of the big three, now it kind of shifts back to the Knicks. They're a better team. They have better, a better chance of winning these games without KD being in there to stalk them. You know, I remember last year at the Garden, I had Brooklyn Brigade people in my ear. I think the, the Nets <laughs> came back at some meaningless game. You know, I, I want these games. These, these games are important to me, and, and these wins are important to me. How do they make it more of a rivalry? I mean, what do you think? They both have to be good. Like, yeah. it's just a, it's a simple thing. And I think, you know, obviously there have been times where we've almost switched places. Like, the only year where I felt it was really close was the first year in Brooklyn where the Nets went out and they were the four seed. They ended up losing to Chicago in the first round yeah. in that brutal seven-game series. You guys obviously got to the Eastern Conference semis with that series against Indiana. Yeah. I think if we had a few years in a row of that, and dare I say we actually played each other in the postseason, 
I think that would help. I think it's just one of those things where both yeah. teams need to be good. And and maybe this is me by being or I was being a naive fan. I thought after the Durant trade, the Kyrie trade, I looked at the roster they ended up with and I said, the Nets are feisty. Like mm-hmm. the Nets are good. Like mm-hmm. I don't think we're that far off from where the Knicks are. And what's crazy is that this season, the way the season started, we're 13 and 10. You guys are 13 and 10. I felt vindicated like, oh, this will be fun. We're on the same level. Yeah. And over the last month, and there's a lot of small things that have contributed to this. You guys have been real good. You make the OG trade. You've accelerated. And we've gone backwards. Mm. And I think that's what's so infuriating as a Nets fan. I don't know how you guys feel about this. I look at my roster and I say, we're not bad. Yeah. Like We shouldn't be a bad basketball team. We should not be a terrible defensive team, which is why a lot of us want Jacques Vaughn fired. As crazy as that sounds after a year, because I look at the pieces on this roster. They have so many good individual defenders. Mm -hmm. They should be a good defensive team at minimum. The fact that they're a crap defensive team doesn't make any sense. And a lot of it falls on coaching. So I think if I was right and Net fans were right that we were kind of on your level, it would be more fun. But when one team is good and the other team sucks and it's hammer versus nail, it never develops as a rivalry. So we just need both teams to be good. Hopefully my team can get there because to your credit, you, you guys are good. You may not be a championship team right now, but. You are a legitimate playoff team, and you got a chance to go on a run, and I'm freaking dreaming of just being the 10 seed. Like, that's where I'm at right now. <laughs> true true indeed, man. I think one thing that might be able to help, I, I like how the NBA in their efforts to cut down on travel, how they have kind of like these two-game series between teams. Like, for re- just recently you saw it between Milwaukee and Detroit where they'll play either home and home or they'll play home, take a day off, and then play another game. I kind of like that because in the second game, you, you see the adjustments by the losing team. Right. Both teams kind of take it up a notch. Maybe that's something that could help, or if you put them in the same group in the in-season tournament. Yeah, maybe. I think I also think like playing more would help, but the problem is it doesn't work because you also yeah. need a team coming to your city every year. Like You need that for every market that here the Lakers come in once a year or the Warriors come in once a year, and I don't know how – Schedule-wise, you could balance it. But I also think that the more you play, the more it's a rivalry. But look, there's only so much the league can do. Yep. We both have to be good. You know, we both have to be on a, on a similar level, and then it'll be fun. Like if God, And I'm not saying this is going to happen, but the Nets get the 10 seed, right? And we win our playing game, and you guys only get the 7 seed, and you lose your playing game. And all of a sudden, it's Madison Square Garden – and it's a winner moves on to the playoffs, loser goes home situation. Yeah. I know you guys can't imagine that right now because you can't believe you'd be in the playing tournament. But if we got something like that, that'd be fun. That'd be yeah. that'd be a big deal. That would enhance it. But it's just going to take us being on the same level. And unfortunately for me, we're not on your level right now. What's up with the Ben Simmons situation, man? <laughs> I mean, uh, it does, I'm it, does sorry. It who, who, who are you speaking of? Uh, this Ben what? I don't know who you're talking about. I mean, ben he, he goes oh. to he goes to Paris. He shoots the 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 movie, the mini movie about about his, about his fashion, and he's on Fashion Week. What's going on with this guy, man? Will he ever get? I, right? I appreciate that you find it fun. I'm glad that you're laughing. I'm glad that everybody in your chat can laugh. Everybody can have a good old time. Except I have to live. It. That's the oh, difference. Really, I have man. to live in a world in which Ben Simmons is on my roster. And what I have decided to do as a fan for now is make believe he doesn't exist, okay? If he wants to show up and play basketball, he can help the Nets. Like, I'll tell you this, when he played briefly earlier this season, by no stretch was he an all-star, but the Nets were better when he was on the floor. I can admit that. But we have to stop thinking of him as Ben Simmons. Yeah. We have to stop thinking about him as a human until he plays basketball. Yeah, like, I didn't yeah. want to see him in France. You think I wanted to see him in France? Like, dude, show up and play <laughs> basketball. Like, I don't want to see you making the trip. Why do you get to make the trip overseas right. when you don't even hoop? So, yeah, yeah. I, look, I hope he comes back. I hope he can help this team or maybe even enhance his value so we could trade his ass. Because I'll make you this promise. Yeah. See, a lot of you Knicks fans didn't make this promise. Mm. And that was every time you turned on Julius Randle, every time you thought he was a dog, every mm. time you thought he couldn't play in New York City, I would say, as a friend to you guys, hey, just keep that energy when he turns it around. Yeah. When he turns it around, have the balls to then trade him. Have the guts to say, Yes, he's playing well, but we're better off moving from him. And most of you guys haven't done that. You've fallen back in love, whatever. Yeah. I promise you I won't do that with that thought. (laughs) If this guy plays well for six weeks, you won't get me saying, oh, Ben's back. 
No, yeah. you know what I'll say? I'll say trade his ass. <laughs> That's what get, I'll say. Get him out of there, man. Yeah, no, the Julius Hive is uh, – they're raring to go, man. They're ready for the playoffs. He's turned it around, though. I, I, I got to yes. give him credit. He's turned it around. He's he's leading. He's playmaking out there. He's put, he's trying to put the team on his back, man. I, I think he's had a good season he's been, so far. He's been great, CP, but I want you to go on record yeah. with something. Yeah. Because I give him credit, too. Like, I can't rip his regular season. Guy's been awesome. Yeah. Come April. Yeah. Come April. Yeah. Come postseason time. Yeah. Do you think we're going to see playoff Julius, or do you think we're going to see this Julius? What do you really think? I think you see playoff Julius. Exactly. Yeah. No, we're on the same I page. We're on the same page. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, absolutely, man. And we'll, I respect your honesty. Yeah. Yeah. We we keep it 100% honest here. You know, the chat might throw tomatoes, but it, we we take it all, man. It, it, it is what it is. Uh, so to everybody in the chat, once again, hit that thumbs up button for you, boys. CP the Franchise, Evan Roberts on the ones and twos. Uh, let's go rapid fire through these real quick. Uh, football Sunday, who's your pick uh, uh, in the uh, conference finals, man? AFC, NFC championship. You cannot, and I cannot. Yeah. Pick against the Kansas City Chiefs. Haven't we learned? You can't, you can't kill them. Learned? You can't kill them. They are the stake in the heart team. Until I yeah. see them walk off as losers, which we've seen, what, three times in the postseason yeah. over the last five yeah. years, it is very tough to pick against them. I like the Ravens. I love that Lamar's going on this run. He's Me had too. an MVP season. Me too. And what he did in the second half against the Texans was tremendous. But I can't pick against Kansas City. And I got to tell you, I don't know if I'm in the minority on this. I'm sick of the Lions, bro. As a Jets fan, you know I don't need to see another loser team <laughs> win before me. So I hope Brock Purdy's a little bit more accurate than he was last week. Yeah. And the Niners take care of business, even without Debo. I would love to see Lamar just continue to silence the haters all, all the way to a championship, man. I, I would love to see them do it. But you're like, you, have, you can't count out the Chiefs. It reminds me of those Patriot Dynasty days where it's just like, just when you think you have them. Yep. And, and it's always like, oh, this regular season, they're struggling. They may not get, get back. They always find a way back, man. And this is what this Kansas City team is looking like. Look, Buffalo is Buffalo, right? And I'm sure you loved what you saw Sunday night. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Wide right once again. Unbelievable. But this Kansas City Chiefs team is just never say die. I, I got to go the other side on Detroit, man. I love the story. I love the story, man. It, it's an incredible run right now. I don't want to see them denied. I want to see them going all the way to Vegas. Dan but, Campbell played for the 0-16 team I, and now has his team I one get- game away. But you should understand, not not as much as anyone, because you are a Yankee fan and you are yeah. a Giant fan. You've had success in your life as yeah. a sports fan, but you're a Knicks fan. Yeah. yeah. And I'm not trying to be a hater. Like, my team's won nothing in the NBA's history, and yeah. you guys have won since 1973. You weren't around yet. <laughs> like, isn't there a part of you that looks at a franchise that finally wins yeah. and gets jealous and says, yeah. why not me? Why not us? That doesn't kind of hit you a little bit. I did that with the Eagles. I was hating hard when the Eagles broke it and, and won the Super Bowl. I, I was hating. I was hating heavy on that one, man. But the, but the Lions, <laughs> it's a feel-good story, man. It's a feel-good story, man. They win, yeah. like, one game on average every year, and now all of a sudden they're one game from, from the Super Bowl. Good team, too. Good yeah, team. They're, they're a hell of a team. Yeah. And, look, the Debo Samuel injury really Big. impacts things. And Brock Purdy, I know it was rainy, but Brock Purdy was a mess in this game. Yeah. Like, he was one of his lousier performances of the season. Yeah. But I think overall the Niners are a better team. I'd pick them. And I think yeah. – not that I'm rooting for them because I really don't like either team. It's not like I'm sitting there and it's like, oh, go Niners. I mean, they are yeah. the elitist of elite when it comes to NFL royalty. But if I had to predict, it was my preseason pick. I'm going to stick with it. Chief Niners Super Bowl. Last one for you, man. I haven't been catching up on Raw and SmackDown, but I'm a Royal Rumble guy. Like, traditionally, I always got to catch, like, my staple pay-per-views. Give me a Royal Rumble pick. Who's who's going to win it, man? Who's winning the Royal Rumble, man? I'm going with CM Punk. Mm. They brought him back. Okay. He wants the main event. He wants to have a title match. Yeah. Usually when a guy comes back, you give him that push. So I'm going yeah. with CM Punk to win the Rumble, and hopefully Seth Rollins will be healthy enough to fight him yeah. at WrestleMania 40. But really what I want, what the people want, what my seven-year-old son wants yeah. is we want The Rock yeah, what's against up with that, Roman man? Reigns. Is that going to happen? It should have happened last year in, in Hollywood, WrestleMania. Is is that going to happen? I mean, it's got to. Like, yeah, it it's either to now or never. Yeah. And the fact that The Rock sort of flirted with it, he's back in the WWE fall, yeah. I think it'll happen. And here's how powerful The Rock is. My seven-year-old loves wrestling. His favorite wrestler is Cody Rhodes. Yeah. And as much as he wants Cody to finish the story, 
he'd prefer to see The Rock challenge Roman Reigns because The Rock is generational, man. That's true. That That's true. He is the people's champ, man. Uh, Evan and Tiki today at 2 to 6.30 on WFAN 660, 101.9 FM. Any guests coming on? What, what do you guys got on tap for today? Today, a lot of football. Little Nick Snats will be joined by the Yankee manager, Aaron Boone. Check in with him. See how he's doing this offseason. Yeah. Ask him, when are we going to get a real pitcher? Please. First question. <laughs> when are we going to get some real pitching in here to help my guy, Garrett Cole, the Cy Young? Let's get real here. I like Stroman. But you understand what <laughs> I'm saying? You. Can we get real here? You know Rodon's going to go down with like a sprained toe in spring training and, and be out for like three months. We, we got to get real here, man. So I understand. Yeah. I understand your concerns. I'm looking for a uh, absolutely, man. Well, we lo- we, uh, we almost lost your connection. But either way, man, thanks again for the time. We know you're busy. Good luck today on the show. And we'll tap in after the game, man. Good luck to you, man. Thank you, man. An honor to join KFTV. I genuinely love, love what you're doing. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Absolutely, man. And once again, that was my guy, Evan Roberts. Salute to everybody in the chat. Once again, hit that thumbs up button for you boys. I hope you enjoyed today's matinee edition of kftv man this is what we do number one show for the fans by the fans special guests tap in salute to everybody on the grind if you guys are on the grind throw a hashtag grind and i'll shout you out greg rewind a great show my guy david Futternick in the building lopez 104 you actually need another guy man like come on man we, we we need another guy please please with the retreads we need an arm. This is an arms race. Astros just got hater. You know, Texas just won the chip. But just not there, man. We got Garrett Cole. We got a dog, an innings eater, an ace. We got to support this guy, man. I just don't think we're there. What do you guys think? Suppose, salute to Exploding Daisies on the grind. <laughs> Brooklyn Nets Brigade shut Evans' mic off. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, man, that's my guy, though. Salute to Evan. Salute to Evan. DJ Tony Loso. Salute to Tony Loso. Seven snapped. Eric Beats. Salute, Eric. Uh, I think I've seen some uh, some um, Super Chats come in. Let me salute to that as well. Shout out to... Oh, Pierce. Franchise channel member. Shout out to Pierce. He says, get them Swamp Dragons out of here. <laughs> salute to Pierce. And speaking of the Franchise channel members, remember, for you Franchise channel members in the chat... Uh, Tuesday, a week from today, after the Knicks versus Jazz game, during the post-game show, the January Franchise Channel member giveaway will be conducted. It is a John Starks autographed, real autograph, 8x10 photo, man. We're going to give this away, man, from us to you for your support. We're going to give this away to one lucky Franchise Channel member, so make sure you tune in to that post-game show. It is going to be very, very important. If you want this keepsake, for your fan cave, your man cave, wherever you want to put this, this is for you guys, man. Anyway, we'll be back tonight for Post Game Live, Knicks versus Nets. You know where to find us, man. Number one show for the fans, by the fans. I'm going to go get some merch out. We got some merch on the way for the people, so we got to get the merch out. Shout out to everybody that went in there and copped their hoodies. And yeah, man, this, this is what we do. Number one show for the fans, by the fans. I'm just checking up on some stuff from the Slack here. Okay, Gamba, I see this Dante's Inferno. Yeah, this is this is fire right here. So we're going to throw that up on the social. So anyway, we'll see you guys uh, tonight, man. Post game, Knicks versus Nets, man. Hope you guys enjoyed. Like, share, subscribe one more time. Join the franchise channel members. And remember that this show is available in audio podcast format. No reason to miss it. Salute to the replay gang. CP the franchise, I'm out of here. Peace.